Welcome back to the arcade. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different, but uh, I have this board here. Some of you may recognize it. This is a Namco Classics Collection Volume 2. Uh, this is the one that has Pac-Man, Rally X, and Dig Dug on it. Um, this board came out in 1996, so it's 27 years old. And I've had it since 1999, and that's 24 years. Uh, I used it in my JAMA cabinets, and uh, it's been a while since I've had it in. Matter of fact, the last time I had it in was last year when I was working on doing a tube swap on a Wells Gardner K4800 13-inch monitor. And if you want to go back and watch that video, it's on my playlist. Um, and I used this board just to hook up to it and, uh, you know, to see what the picture looked like. And it looked kind of a little bit off to me, but I didn't really think much of it. And I, I didn't really notice uh, too bad. Uh, then I got looking through a group on Facebook. Uh, it's a group, I forget the exact name. I'll put a, a picture of the post. Uh, which has a description of the the name of the group on it. And uh, somebody was talking about this very board, the Namco Classics Volume 2, and they were talking about how they had the colors was off. And um, I looked at the picture and I said, well, that looks like what mine looked like. And then he had a picture of what it looks like when it's correct. So I went back looking through my old pictures where I had taken some screenshots of this board when I, back when I got it. And sure enough, <laughs> there's a difference uh, between night and day between the, the colors. And this has kind of a pinkish hue to it. And the colors are now streaking. When I did the video with the monitor, the tube swap, I don't believe the colors were streaking as bad as they are now. Anyway, what causes this is bad capacitors. And uh, I think this is the color video chip right here. And these three capacitors right here are the, are the three that you have to change in order to fix the, the color problem. Well, I got to thinking, I said, well, I could change these three capacitors, no problem, and get the board back up and running. But the board is 27 years old. If these capacitors are going bad, when they start going bad, they'll start leaking the uh, electrolyte that's in the capacitor onto the board and corrode the board. And this board has quite a few uh, capacitors. So I got to thinking, I said, well, if I'm going to change these three, I might as well go ahead and change all of them on the board. Uh, the only thing is these are surface mount electrolytic capacitors. Uh, SMD, which stands for surface mount device. And unlike through hole, it has one through hole capacitor electrolytic right here. Uh, these, of course, through hole means it has a hole in the PC board where you put the leads through and you solder it on the back side, which is what you find in most uh, monitors you recap and a lot of the, the older video game boards. Uh, the caps are all through hole caps. Well, this has one through hole cap and the rest a surface mount. So that's going to require a different technique to change them uh, because you have to do all your soldering on the top side of the board. And just like a, a standard electrolytic, it has two leads on it and they solder to pads, flat pads that are on the board. Well, you have one on each side so, how do you get them off? Well, I got watching a few videos, and some people, there are several different ways. Some people will heat up one side and put pressure on it and sort of rock it a little bit to one side and heat up the other side, rock it to the other side, and it might take two or three times doing this going back and forth, and then you gradually get it off. Well, that's fine, I guess, but puts a, a lot of heat strain on the pads, on the, on the circuit board. 
And we all know that if you put too much heat on a trace on a circuit board, you run the risk of lifting that trace. It separates from the board, and that's not good. Um, so another method, uh, some people use a hot air gun, but that heats up everything on the board. And I've seen people, if, if you try to heat these up to take these off, well, these are little resistors, surface mount resistors and some surface mount capacitors. I've actually seen people where they're heating stuff up and uh, even though it's not much force, you're still heating up all these other components and the solder gets loose and it's possible for you to blow these little resistors and, and, and other components off of the pad. So, and I don't have a, a hot air gun anyways. So, um... There's another method which uses brute force, which you take a pair of pliers and you grab the can of the uh, capacitor and you just twist it and it pops right off. Well, I've seen uh, a YouTube video. It's a guy on there called Mr. Carlson's Lab. And if you haven't seen his videos and familiar with it, check him out. He has a video that shows you how to change these capacitors by using the brute force method and, and what you do to put them back on. Uh, he, he changes capacitors on, well, he works on everything, antique radio equipment, antique uh, electronics equipment. Um, the demonstration that he did online, he was uh, changing capacitors in an oscilloscope. And what he did was, when he took the electrolytics off, he replaced them with tantium capacitors. So I got me thinking, I said, well, tantium. So what I did was I went ahead and I ordered the capacitors. I'm gonna replace them with these tantium capacitors. These are a lot flatter than the uh, electrolytic can capacitors, so they should be easier to solder back on the board. I say they should be, but we're going to find out. I haven't done a whole lot of uh, SMD work. I've done a little bit in the past, uh, and I've been very successful with it. So uh, we're going to give it a go. First, though, let me show you what the, the board looks like. I'll put it in the, uh, hook it up to the JAMA cabinet here, and uh, we'll go ahead and see what it looks like. Okay, first thing I did was, this is my J-Rock Multi-Williams board. I plugged it in, so I want to show you that the monitor looks fine and everything works. So let's fire that up, and I'll show you that the monitor is adjusted and the colors look fi fine on it. <laughs> and there we go. Um... Had it set on bubbles, so there you go. So everything is working fine there. Let's do a little Robotron here. Everybody likes, likes Robotron. So as you can see, the board is working fine. Let's do one more test. I'll take the multi-Williams off. And let's hook up this board here. And we'll try this one. This one is my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time board. Okay, so we've established the monitor in my jam jamma cabinet is working fine. 
All right, so let me unplug Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And let's hook up the Namco Classic Collection Volume 2. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, at first glance, it doesn't really look that bad, but ooh, there you go. See the background is sort of pinkish. It's supposed to be more of a, I don't know, a yellowish, greenish color or whatever, a brownish color. And as you can see, even though it doesn't look that bad, there is some color smearing. And uh, yeah, it's just got that weird pink hue to it. Let's see. I think I, I don't have this set up on free play, I don't think. No. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, that background is not supposed to be pinkish like that. Uh, it's supposed to be a totally different color. I'll put up a screenshot of what it used to look like right here so you can compare the two. Take a look at that and take a look at the screenshot and you'll see that uh, it, it's nothing like it. You can see the streaking pretty bad on the on the cars and and the writing there, that's supposed to be white background and it's sort of pinkish with streaks in it. And in the white you, text there, you can see it's sort of pinkish in, in with the text. Yeah, it just uh, don't look right. Yeah. So we need to do a cap kit on this board. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, well, let's get started. Uh, before you do anything like this, uh, what you want to do is take plenty of pictures. So I took uh, pictures so I know where each cap went and I can actually read the value of the cap so I know where to put them back in the same place and get the uh, polarity right, although it's probably on the board. They're marked pretty, pretty pl plainly on the board, which is positive and which is negative, but um, yeah, I uh, went ahead and took pictures of everything and a picture of the complete board. So we should be all set for that. And then, of course, uh, ahead of time, I had made up a list of all the caps, the position number, what they are, the values and everything. And I placed an order with DigiKey and that's where I got my caps. Now, I did go ahead and order tantium caps instead of electrolytics. Why did I do that? Well, because that's what uh, Mr. Carlson's lab did. He's a pretty smart guy and he seems to know what he's talking about. And if he replaces these electrolytic surface mount capacitors with tantium caps in his equipment, it's good enough for my game board. So that's what I'm gonna look at it. We're gonna try it. If it doesn't work, we can always remove them and go back and put the regular electrolytics on, but I think they'll be working fine. Um, I know a lot of people give tantiums a bad rap because they will short out, but normally if you have, have them uh, overrated for voltage, you normally don't have a problem. It's when you have a tantium cap that is running at 
right at the borderline of the rated voltage capacity, that's when you have the most problem with them, from what I understand. So, uh, if they're okay for Mr. Carlson, they're okay by me. So, with that said, let's get started. We're going to try his brute force method, and if we find out it's ripping the pads off the board, we'll stop and we'll reassess and we'll figure out another way of doing it. There's another way of doing it. You can take your side cutters and put it down to the base and clip them off. And then you might have to go back and clip the little nub off so you can get the plastic base off. And then, of course, we're going to have to come back with the, uh, the soldering iron anyway and uh, because most of the time it'll leave behind little leads on the pad. Sometimes they'll break free and uh, you'll have nothing but solder on there. So I guess it depends on how well they were soldered at the, the factory. All right, well, let's go ahead and give it a try, and we'll just start removing capacitors until we either get them all off the board or we have a problem. So I got my goggles on because my eyes ain't what they used to be. So let's give it a try here. Let me grab onto it with these needle nose pliers. And I want to grab it down low by the base. Give it a twist. And it pops right off. Neat. And yeah, still got the little nubs on the board we're going to have to desolder. Okay. Let me see if I can get a little more of a close-up here. Let's see if we can All right, let's see that is What am I looking at here? Yeah, that one right there. All right, let's see if we can show you a little closer there. Get it down as low as we can. Squeeze it a little bit. Give it a twist. And it pops off. And that one left the little nubs. So we have to come back. Clip the little nub off. And then we get that plastic base off. Didn't quite get the nub off. There we go. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Well, let's go ahead and twist the rest of these off. And let's see, I'll start down here, give me more room to get the other ones off. And these are all leaving the base on. Hmm. These are kind of close together, so they're a little bit harder to deal with. Bases staying on with those. Uh, 
that one the whole thing came off it looks like it might be a little corrosion under some of these we're gonna I'll, I'll get back to it and we'll look and see if we can see any corrosion and it's got a little terminal sticking up here it's in the way all the way off well, that through hole is kind of in the way but that's okay we'll get it Most of these are leaving the base on. Okay. It looks like all of them except for this one. Now, this one right here, I somehow missed that. It didn't have numbers on the top of it, so I was thinking it was an inductor. But I got looking at it, and it's got the label on the side of it. And it is a 6.3 volt, 1,000 microfarad. So I don't have one to replace that with. So we'll just have to uh, bypass that one for the time being. And... Uh, I'll next order I place I'll order one and we'll take care of that too. All right. Um, let's see if we can work on getting these bases off. And the plastic base just sort of breaks in two. So, not too bad. And they just pop right off. So far, none of the pads seem damaged. Let's see if I can show you a little bit closer about what I'm doing here. See, it's got the plastic base on there. Let me see if I can get this camera down. Let's see if I can't show you a little closer here. I know it's hard to see. It's hard to film this stuff. Uh, okay. There's some right there. So see the little, the two little stubs? You have to take and cut those stubs off. And then the plastic piece will just come right off. And 
And if it don't, it'll just break right off. See that one, the, the whole lead just pulled right off. The, the solder just pulled apart, but the pad is, the pad is fine. This is kind of hard to do when I'm trying to film it. Now that one looks like it has a little corrosion there to where the capacitor was probably starting to leak. That's the reason why is if you have one of these boards, you need to, even if it's still working, I would do a cap kit on it and replace these caps because uh, it's just a ticking time bomb. And uh, yeah, you just you just need to get rid of them and, and do a cap kit on them. All right. Go through here and touch a few of these up. Right here, still got a nub. Alright, I'm going to go over these and uh, maybe I'll put my macro lens on and uh, see if I can give you a close up of what they look like now that we're going to pull them off. Okay, well I got my camera with the uh, macro lens on it. And let's see if we can start with the first one we took off down here. See what that one looks like. If I can get it focused in here. And yeah, that one don't look too good. That, that looks like it was starting to spew its guts a little bit. A little corrosion there. Alright, well let's get up here. And try the ones in the video circuit, which I think was causing a problem. So we'll start up here. If I can get my bearings here. And yeah, that one definitely looks like it was starting to spew out a little bit of electrolyte. That one too. So is that one. That one there, same thing. Alright, let's see. I think there's one up right here. We took off. Oh yeah, that one definitely uh, had started some corrosion. They're not too terribly bad, so I think we caught it in time. We should be able to clean that up pretty good and uh, take care of this board. Alright. Let's start over here in the audio section. This section over here is the audio section. And I believe some people have reported audio problems. And that's related to bad capacitors too. So uh, let's see what we can see up here. Uh, that one might be, or that could be flux. I don't know. Might have been starting a little bit. Yeah, that one definitely showing a little bit of of corrosion there. Uh, same with that, just slightly, but it's a little bit there. 
Uh, let's see. Here we go. Yeah, that one definitely is uh, starting with corrosion. And just a little bit. All right, that one too, a little bit. That one definitely. That one looks like it was close to the legs being eat off. Which would certainly be a problem. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's all of them. So, um, yeah. Now, first thing we need to do is try to clean them up a little bit. Uh, see if we can get a little bit of that corrosion off before we start the desoldering process. Because we're going to have to go back in there and, and um, add some flux and add some solder and get those remnants of the leg still soldered on a lot of them. Uh, we got to get them off and clean the pads off. So I don't know. Uh, I got some denatured alcohol here. I don't know if that's going to have any effect on that corrosion or not, but let's let's give it a try. If I can get it open here. It's been a while since I've used this. It's practically a full can, I think. see what we can do here. Let me try it down here first. And denatured alcohol should dry fairly quickly. It is highly flammable, so you want to be careful with it. All right, let me get the camera back out with the macro lens and see if I can show you a little bit and see what it's doing, if anything. Okay, i uh, got it set up. I'm going to show you the process of cleaning the pads off. we got to get the legs of the uh, capacitors we cut off off of them and clean them up. I like to use liquid flux. Uh, you know, some people use the gel in a, like a little pen or syringe. Uh, some people use the, the little pen that you just wipe on like a marker. You know, it doesn't matter. Flux is flux. What, whatever you decide you want to use. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little flux on it. and get my soldering on here clean tip now i got a chisel tip on here um i figured the, the, the flat end will help cleaning a, a flat surface so i'm just going to put a a little bit of solder on the tip. Let me clean that back off and put some more on there. And I got my arm set at about, well right now it's about 625 degrees. Uh, and what we're going to do is just come in here and just try to rake those uh, legs off of there. If these even got legs on them, I don't know. They they may have pulled off of this one. But usually, if they if they got the remnants of the of the capacitor legs on there, it'll stick to the soldering iron. So let's see what happens here. I don't think that one had anything. I think that was just plain old solder. All right. Now we can come back with some solder wick, which is nothing but flat copper braid that's got flux infused into it. And we're going to lay it down on top of it. 
and this darn chisel tip is so small it's hard to see we're just going to lay it down on here and let it get hot and soak up the solder and just sort of rub it across the pad and I shouldn't have put my denatured alcohol away now what I need to do is get me another q-tip here with some alcohol on it and let's come back and clean this off and there we have it a nice pad to solder a brand new capacitor on all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of these pads and clean them up and get them ready and then when I get them all ready I'll come back and show you and then we'll show you the process of putting the capacitors on uh, like I say I've only done this uh, once or twice and it's been right many years and but hey it's just soldering right so uh, what could possibly go wrong all right well all the desoldering is done except for the uh, through hole cap right here which uh, I'll get to that in a minute but I've uh, cleaned up all the solder pads so let me take you in for a close up here and I'll show you if I can find them here That one I might have to go back over again. Let's see. Because it's got a little nub right there. So I'll go over that again. But the rest of them are nice and shiny and flat. So they should all be ready to accept uh, the new caps. Yeah, let me uh, go over that one again. Just going to take a little bit of solder wick. And let's just smooth this one out here. Okay, that's done. All right, that's better. Okay. Now, need to desolder this uh, through hole cap, and I've been looking at it, and it is awful small holes there. I'm going to try to do it with my uh, desolder, desoldering iron here. But uh, it may not want to do it. So let's give it a try here. Make sure I get the... right ones here. OK. 
Okay. That's right here. These two. One's on a ground plane and one's not. So let me just add a little starter to it. Solder to this one. And let's see if that's going to take it out. Nope. I think what I'm going to have to do is add solder to it and this rock this one to get it out. Usually I find these through hole components that have these small holes that they go into very hard to get out with a solder sucker. So add some solder, heat it up, and just rock it out. And once you get it out, then we can try to suck it out since there's no, no component lead in it. Hopefully we can suck the hole uh, clear. So let's see if we're going to have any luck doing that. that's going to do anything. One of them is partially open, but the other one's not. I hate these circuit boards. It's got these uh, real small through holes. They're a pain in the butt. I just nope all right well, I'm gonna work on that see if I can figure out a way to get that off okay finally got them out good old solder wick just had to put the solder wick on the board and put the tip of the soldering on uh, this is the chisel tip. I could have put a pointed tip on there, I guess, but I put the corner of the chisel tip in the hole and just had to let it heat up because it's got this big trace there. It just needed more heat before the solder would melt enough so that the, uh, it would soak up on the solder wick. So, uh, yeah, got both of them out that way. The, the other one's got a big... Uh, ground plane, well actually it's a positive rail, but it's a thick trace on this side and then the negative's got the big trace on this side, so you need to apply more heat to it. And that desoldering uh, gun just wouldn't do it. I guess the, uh, 
the hole in it was a little too big and it was just you couldn't get the heat to transfer to it so anyway all right we got that taken care of so now i'll regroup and i'll get out the capacitors and i'll see if i can line them up clean up a little bit of this mess here and uh get ready to start putting the tantium capacitors back on the board let's talk about the tantium capacitors that i'm going to uh, replace the electrolytics with uh, right here i have uh, on the board, they use three different size electrolytic capacitors. Um, I don't know what size rating they are. I've, I've never really looked them up. But uh, the tantium capacitors also go by size, and they go by letter designation. These are type A, and then the middle ones here are type B. And this is type C. They also have other letter designations which refer to not only the length and the width, but also the height. So sometimes you might have to go in and do a little research. Uh, you can go on DigiKey where, where I got these or any of the uh, places. I'm sure uh, Mauser has the same thing. And uh, you just have to look and measure your uh, cap you're replacing and then try to get something that's similar in size. Now, I, I'm going to admit I didn't do a lot of measuring. I did a lot of guessing. And uh, this seemed like my best choice right here. For the smaller ones right here, I chose size A. And then for these, I chose size B. And these, I chose size C. And as you can see, each time you step up in size, they're, I believe they're going to work just fine. Uh, but when we actually place them on the pad on the board is when we're going to really know the whole story here. So, yeah, I could have took some rulers and calipers or whatever and done some measurements, this, that, and the other, and I would have known for sure, but... I think I'm going to get by. So let's uh, go ahead and start and we'll find out. Well, I'm all set up here and we're going to start with probably the easiest one to get to, the one down here on the corner of the board here. So this is the picture that I took of it. And as you can see, the positive is on the edge of the board here. The black line on the electrolytic is over on the left on the inside of the board so that's positive and that one is negative now one thing about the uh, tantium capacitors is it's opposite the tantiums have a line for the positive side and nothing for the negative side so you got to make sure when you put them in that the line on the capacitor uh, goes to the plus side so you don't put them in backwards now these little boogers here <laughs> let me put it under here so you can see it there's the little line on them and they come in these little uh, plastic packages and these things are kind of a bear to get open so uh, let me go ahead and open it out and as you can see they're rather small so this is going to be a little challenging here so let me see if i can get this out without damaging it and losing it okay there we are we got it out Oh, that's a tiny little booger. Okay, first thing I need to do is we're going to put a little flux down on the pad. Okay. Now 
now we've got to position it on the board. And let's see, how am I going to do this? I need a pair of tweezers, but I don't have any tweezers. So let me see if I can do it with these four snips here. And let's take a small screwdriver. Boy, this is going to be fun. Okay, that looks pretty well centered. Now the trick is going to be holding it down while I tack it with solder on one side. So I'm going to get my, again, my chisel tip soldering on. And I'm going to load it up with some solder. Now, let me go ahead and clean it off and then load it up again. And this is going to be the trick. Because, for one thing, it'd be easier. I've got this camera in the way. I'm kind of looking through the, the viewfinder of the camera, but then also. Okay, I got down pressure on it, but I think I moved it a little bit. Moved it a little bit again. Okay. All right. Maybe it'd be better if I just... Let's try that. crooked but it's close enough close enough for gum at work all right again this camera is in the way so I'm gonna switch over to the other side here I'm gonna put a little more solder on my tip Too much solder. Okay, we got a learning curve here. Definitely don't put too much solder on there. Come back with some solder wick. This is a, oh. I can see right now I'm going to have to do this off camera probably. There we go. And I think we got the first one on, but I'm going to take it and look at it with my magnifiers here and see what it looks like. So I'll be right back. Okay, well that might not have been the most graceful job ever, but uh, I believe we're successful. It looks good after I cleaned it up. Let's see if I can get you in here. That side soldered. That side soldered. So 
one down and a bunch to go. Okay, next up we'll start with the three that was giving us problems. It's supposed to be the ones for the, uh, the colors. Uh, these are 4.7 microfarads at 25 volts. They're in C19, C20. No, wait a minute. See, that's the problem with this board. It's, it's hard to tell what the numbers are. I think it's C14, C15, and C16. Yeah, I think that's the ones. These over here are these smaller ones over here. So let's go ahead and do this one first, C14. Uh, okay. And that is this one right here. Right, right here on the end. So uh, these are the smaller size. These are size A. So as you can see, these are smaller than that one I just put on. So first we have to try to uh, get it out of the package. And I'll try by using the side cutters to clip the plastic on three sides and hopefully we can just squeeze it out ah people to work with these things how do you get them out of these packages? Very carefully. Okay, top pulls up. Finally, got one out. Okay, again, I'll put some flux on the board. And now we have to try to place it. All right, again, positive is on the left hand side here. But let's confirm that by looking here as negative is on, I got the board upside down, so it's in the same orientation here. This is the one we're replacing. And the negative is on the right side, so the positive is over here on the left. So on the tantum capacitor, we have to put the line on the positive side. All right, let me put it down. Yes, tweezers would be a, a big help. Maybe an X-Acto knife would be better. Okay. Well, that'll work. It's awful small. It got a lot of uh, pads sticking out, but it's got plenty of contact on the pad also. All right, try not to go hog wild on this uh, solder this time. Let's see if I can brace myself on the board and maybe brace myself on this other component right here. Okay. I believe that was successful. All right, I'm gonna switch off to try something different here. 
I have this uh, smaller diameter solder here. And this is probably perfect for this. It's a whole lot smaller than my standard solder. See if I can get this up here. It's almost probably half the size or maybe even smaller. So I'm going to use that. Now normally if I was doing this off camera I would just spin it around because I'm right handed and I would come in the, to the other side but I should be able to do this left handed here. I hope. Now because of this eight uh, I see sock uh, chip here. I got to come in at a steeper angle. Okay. I'm just going to add a little bit to that. And I think we can call that good. All right. Now, what did I do with the rest of the... Lose these little boogers here. Let me see if I can just peel this back since I already got it started. Uh, probably best just to clip it off and start anew. Yeah, I think the secret is to clip it on both or three sides and then you can peel the top plastic back and hopefully it should fall right out boom there we go I get the hang of it all right let's try this again R17 R17 is again uh, 4.7 at 25 volts which is what this tantium is. So we'll put our flux down. Again, the positive is on this side. And I flipped it. Okay, there we go. And I'm just taking my time and get it lined up. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you look at some of these components on this board, these small components, you'll see that they're not perfect. Okay, but I, I like to try to get them as perfect as I can. All right, let's see if we could do this again. trick is to calm down without moving it. Bingo.
Maybe I'll get to hanging this before I finish. Okay. That side. Okay, two down. Actually, three if we count the first one. All right, let's do this again. Okay. Dump it out. Put that there so I won't lose it. Get it spun around the right way. Some flux. And we are doing C16. Which is this one right here. And the same orientation, uh, negative on this side, positive on this side, so the line on the tantium goes to the positive side. Okay. Dropped it in place. Now let's fine tune it. It's pretty close. Well, it was. Okay, it looks good. Soldering iron geared up again. Put some on the tip. Again, we'll steady a hand on the board and try to come in. That's what makes it nice about an exacto knife is on that angle. So I can angle it up and it sort of sets flat on it. So, again, try to just get it flat if I can. Yep. Got to get it in between the chip. Ah, I moved it. Close enough for government work. Get my little fine solder again. Okay. And as you you hold the chisel tip down on the pad and against the component, the capacitor in this case, and once it, you're sure that the solder is flowing, you can kind of lift it up or scrape the side and that sort of brings the solder up against the, the edge because the, the solder pad on these capacitors go all the way up the side. All right. Let me do this one, just a little more solder. 
Okay. That's three of them. Um, yeah, I got one more to go there. And that's a different value. That's uh, 10 microfarad at 16 volts. So I tell you what, I'm not going to film doing this whole board. Uh, I think I've kind of showed you my technique, and I'm going to see if I can't uh, perfect it a little more as I go. But um, without having to worry about filming it, and uh, I can do one side, I can flip the board around without having to reposition for the cameras. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of work to, to try to get a shot so that y'all can see. It, the shots don't always work out, but I try to do my best to get, you know, the best shot I can. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put my macro lens back on the camera. I'm going to get a little close-up on these, and I'll show you what they look like. And maybe we'll do a little cleanup action with the denatured alcohol. So I'll show you what they look like right after you solder it, and then we'll clean them off. So uh, let's get ready to do that. Okay, let's take a look and see how it did. All right, let's see if I can focus in here. All right, it might be a little heavy with the solder, but that's, that shouldn't hurt a thing. I'll uh, try to ease up on the solder as I go. But uh, yeah, they look well soldered there. So. Let me take a Q-tip with some denatured alcohol. Oh, there's Q-tips coming apart. Or oh, I need better Q-tips. Okay. Eh, not bad. It'll do. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and, and do the rest of them. And if I run into any problems, uh, I'll come back. Maybe I'll do a couple more on the camera. But I know this video is probably getting kind of long now, so I'm not going to bore you too much with it. The main thing is we want to get to the results. Will the tantium capacitors work with this board? Will they play nice? Uh, is it going to fix the board? And another thing about tantium capacitors, yeah, you run the risk of maybe shorting <laughs> and they catch on fire or whatever, but I don't think we're going to have that problem with these uh, like you do in the older ones on the older game boards. Uh, but, you know, only time will tell. But these won't leak their electrolyte because of how, you know, they're, they're made. So I don't even know if they have uh, what's in a tantum capacitor. But it's a hard case, and I don't think they leak. I could be wrong about that, but uh, if, if that's the case, if anybody knows, will these surface mount tantiums ever leak? Anything will go bad, but... You know, I, I feel like these will probably last longer than the uh, electrolytic can type. But who knows? Like I say, time will only tell. All right. Enough babbling. Let me get to work, and we'll be back when I finish this. Well, here's the board. All finished. And I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, let me go ahead and get my other camera here, and I'll give you a little close-up. And then we'll put the macro lens on it and uh, see if we can get it even closer. So there's that one. There's all the ones in the video section. And over here is the audio section. So that's basically it. So, yep, looking good. Did we fix it, though? We're going to find out here in a minute. Let me put the macro lens on, and I'll give you a little close-up and show you. I got them pretty straight. It may not be perfect, but uh, 
solder joints look good, so it should work fine. Okay, let me try this. Uh, I figured it'd be better to put the camera on the uh, tripod and me move the board around. So uh, let me get it in focus here if I can. Okay, there we go. There's the first one we did. Yeah, not too bad. Then we'll go over here. And like I say, they're not perfect, but they're not bad with what I had to work with. They should work anyway. Let's see. These were a little hard to get to because of that uh, component on the heat sink there. That one was a, was it that one? Or, yeah, that one's kind of a bear. It doesn't look like it, but there ain't much room there. These were okay. Yeah. No problem for the rest of these. So, all right, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, process wasn't too bad. So now comes the big test. Let's hook it up to the JAMA cabinet and see what it looks like. All right, well, we're all set up here. So let's go ahead and plug the board in. And we'll cross the fingers, keep an eye on the board, and well, yeah, we can do both at the same time. I'll, I'll split screen it until the picture comes all the way in. Okay, are we ready? Let's fire it up. Don't see no smoke. And let's see, cross our fingers. Yes, we have success. That's the right color. That's what it's supposed to be. No color streaks. The uh, little text box was white. Now you could probably tweak the monitor a little bit, but it is already tweaked for uh, for the other games. So that's the thing about having a JAMA cabinet where you change boards. Not all games are exactly the same as far as the position of the game on the screen and and uh, the color adjustments and all that stuff. So that's what kind of makes putting a multi switcher in one of these uh, sometimes can be a bummer because some games just don't play nice together, but that's another subject. Uh, yeah, this is uh, looking good. So, uh, let me grab a token here. And let's go to the menu. Yeah, it's a little hard to play sideways. Uh, so I'm not really going to try to play it. I just want to see what it looks like. See if the sound sounds right.
Ah, he got me. I gotta say, it's a little difficult sideways here. Let's see, down. Ah! Didn't know he could get me through the wall there. Okay, well, obviously we have a success here, so I'm not going to go into any gameplay or anything, but let me know if, in the comments uh, if you would like to actually uh, see some gameplay and a uh, little review of this Namco Classics 2 game. Uh, let me know, and I'll put it in my other JAMA cabinet. I have another one identical to this, except this is my horizontal and uh, I have a vertical over there, so it's just better access to this to use it as a test monitor. So, you know, there's more room over here right now. So I have to move a few things, and, and uh, we can put it in my vertical JAMA cabinet. And uh, if you all want to see it, I'll go ahead and put this game in, and we'll do some gameplay and go through the menu system and all that. Uh, I have to refresh myself. I think you press player one and player two. Yeah, and then it goes back to the select screen. The neat thing about this game, you have, of course, Rally X, Dig Dug, and Pac Man. You have the original games, then you have what they call the alternate or the alternative game. I forget exactly what they call it. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, uh,. It's a, it's a nice game. Uh, it really is. So we'll do that if you want to. Um, also, I was looking to uh, through eBay, and I looked through some posts online of some forums and all, and I was trying to get a gauge on what this board would cost today. Um, I bought this in 1999 when I bought the uh, game cabinets here. And the guy I bought them from, of course, uh, these came out in uh, 1996. So it was only like three years old when I bought this game. Therefore, I, I paid $250 for it back then, back in 1999. That was high price back then, I thought anyway. Maybe not. I don't know what this game cost originally. Was this only a kit, or did this come in a dedicated cabinet? I'm, I'm thinking it was a kit game, but it could have came in a dedicated cabinet. Let me know in the comments if you know, because I don't really know. Um, if it came in a dedicated cabinet, I don't think I've ever seen one. But that don't mean anything. Uh, anyway, a uh, few days back, I don't know if they're still on there, but on eBay... I found one with a buy it now price of $587. And they had a new old stock kit still in the box. They took it out of the box to take pictures. And I don't remember if they had hooked it up to see if it still worked or not. Uh, I'd have to go back and look again. But anyway, it was basically a new old stock kit, even though it had been opened. It had never been uh, installed in anything. It still had the decals, the, the manual, you know, the, the little decal for the tell you how to play the game and all. I don't know if it had a marquee or not. Uh, so I don't know if it came as a kit. But then again, I don't know if I've ever seen a proper marquee for this either. Anyway, the new old stock kit on eBay was a buy it now price of $875. Yes. And I have seen in the past, looking through uh, Clav, Form, Callista Video Games, and a few other places, uh, I have seen them sell anywhere from like $175. Uh, average was like $200, $250. And then I've seen some for like 400 425 So it's all over the place. I guess it depends on whether it's working, um, whether it's tested. Uh, and nowadays, of course, if you have an original board with the original caps on it, 
uh, it's probably not going to be long before you're going to be in the same situation that I was in. So I would say if you have one of these boards, since it is a high dollar board, it seems to be fetching a good price. Uh, now whether that's what they actually can get for them, if somebody wants it bad enough, I guess somebody would pay that. But on the average, I'd say anywhere from uh, 250 350 maybe. Let me know if I'm kind of out of the ballpark there, but uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. But at, at any rate, uh, if you have one of these boards, whether you want to sell it or not, um, or if you're looking to buy one, uh, find out if the capacitors have already been changed on it. If they are, you should be good to go. If not, then you might want to look into what I did. Uh, and you can go back with the original electrolytic capacitors. But I decided to go with the tantium because I don't believe, and I could be wrong, let me know in the comments, that these won't leak like the, uh, the can electrolytics did, the aluminum cans. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know, but I'm just going with that. But if this lasted from um, 1996, which is 27 years, no matter what you put on there, you should get another maybe 20 years, 20, even 27 years, because, well, I don't remember the last time I had this hooked up and it, it was correct. The last time, last year, you know, it, it was messed up, so, and I didn't recognize it because I hadn't played it in so long. So anyway, uh, yeah, change those capacitors, and that kind of makes me look at other boards, too. If you have other boards which are getting up in the age, uh, maybe it's time just to replace all the electrolytic capacitors on all these boards we got. You know, some people say, eh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But this was still working, although it, you could tell it was messed up, just the colors. But if I hadn't have done this now, what's the chances that those capacitors would start really sprewing the guts out and really causing some severe uh, damage to the board? So, yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. If you like the video, be sure to give me that thumbs up. Uh, it helps. You know, I'm, I'm over a thousand uh, subscribers, but uh, I still don't have enough watch hours. Uh, so, you know, it would help if everybody would watch my videos all the way through. I need to get those watch hours up, but the only thing that's going to help is I start putting out more videos that people want to watch. So, that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, try to put out some more videos that people want to watch. So, anyway... Till next time, this has just been another arcade fix. Have you had your arcade fix today?